paid an arm and a leg for me to find out I could be paying less if I literally cut you, the middleman, out. But you didn't tell me that you're technically the middleman. You made it seem like this was being made on the United Kingdom soil. No. Just... Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Nengi and I record videos on fashion, travel, lifestyle. But today's video is going to be something completely different. I just wanted to do this video because I felt like I would have been at an advantage if I had something like this when I was starting my business. But I did it really, like I did my research obviously, but I just felt like it would be helpful to people who want to launch a business, particularly women's wear and fashion and also small businesses in general, just things to know. Now, I'm going to list out a few things that I feel are important to remember when wanting to launch a business, but these are in no particular order. So don't think that one is more important than the other. I feel like they're all pretty important and some people will take away something from this video and some people won't take as many things from this video. So yeah, just bear that in mind before I start. But anyways, enough of the rambling. I'm just going to jump right in. So the first thing, and sorry if you see me looking now on my phone, it's because I made some notes because I couldn't remember everything. But the first thing is to know your niche. And when I say know your niche, just understand the fashion market itself. So obviously there are brands who have timeless pieces and there are brands who have only trendy pieces. But I think that it's important to, you know, understand where you would like to sit in that market and understand what people actually want. So I know people always want to be like a timeless brand and that's really what I feel like I'm striving towards, to be a timeless brand that, you know, creates pieces for women that they can wear today, tomorrow, next year and in a couple of years time that don't really go out of style. Kind of like Chanel, you know, you're always gonna want like a suit, nice blazer, tweed blazer, whatever. But trends come and go. But the advantage of trends is that you can hop on a trend so that you can kind of like market to the people who maybe like your brand but they still do want something trendy so it's really important to basically just know your niche and know what people are loving at the moment and with fashion i feel like you always have to be on the ball you always have to know what's hot and what's not really that hot and i feel like i would have been an advantage if i knew that because anyway i'll get into that number two is to identify your target audience and this is very important because identifying your target audience really helps you sort of like zero in on the people you're actually selling to. You might see other brands and smaller brands as well. And you know, like this celebrity has worn this outfit from theirs and this celebrity has worn this. So sometimes you might feel like, oh my gosh, but why isn't that person, like how do I get that person to wear it? But you've got to ask yourself, do you actually want X to wear your, to wear your outfit, you know? Just because it's like they're famous, they're popular, they're celebrities and they're wearing this new brand or that new brand, you really need to hone in like, are you actually selling to this person, this celebrity or this influencer that has worn this other person's brand? Like, is that who you really want to sell to? So sometimes we get lost in the excitement of it all. Like, oh my God, like JLo wore my, you know, but is, is JLo your target audience? Like you really need to hone in on who they are because those would be your repeat customers. Those would be the people that come back time and time and time again. So I feel like that's really, really important. I personally wrote a customer profile of the exact type of woman that I want to be seen in NWP. I literally wrote the TV shows she watches, the types of things she eats, where she goes for dinner, what she does for a living. And it's really important to get it down to a T so you literally don't, you have like tunnel vision and you don't get swayed by all the things I just previously mentioned and you know not getting as much because at the end of the day you're making your outfits and your garments for that person and those types of people so that's really what you want to really garner like that's what you really want to like hone your skills on I don't know if that makes sense but you know <laughs> now number three is finding out the exact costs of what it'll take to start your business because honestly I remember my dad asking me like so how much do you need to start this business and I would say I'll say a random number because I don't want to say something too high but I'll just say something and he'd be like oh is that all you need I'm just like yeah that'll be fine but I hadn't really calculated what exactly I need and I ended up needing a lot more because when you think about it like you got to factor in costs like obviously your manufacturer and little costs like your 
you know business cards or your domain for your website or who's going to do like your the technical side of things for you like there's so much that goes into it that I feel like people don't really realize and I feel like if you can sew and if you like you can pattern cut and you just feel like you know what I'm just gonna go get fabrics I'm gonna go get like trimmings I'm just gonna sew but there's so much that goes into it that we never really factor in and it becomes this this huge some it can be overwhelming if I'm honest it can be quite overwhelming but that's why you really need to like factor in every single thing like to a T so that you're not overspending and you're not under spending as well like you've got to spend on the important things like that's very important so yeah I I definitely will dive into more of these points when I showcase my brand and when I tell you more about you know how I started what sort of things I went through but these are just little tips for small businesses and people thinking of starting businesses to know now number four is find a mentor I this is this is also for me to be honest because I don't have one but I feel like I would do so well with one and I would have done so well with one when I launched in September it's so easy to feel like you can do it all on your own but it's you know it's nearly impossible like no man is an island and I feel like you really would do well with someone who is sort of like someone you can reach out to and you can be open and honest and confident with because you can ask like you can ask your friends you can ask your mum you can ask your boyfriend you can ask your brothers your sisters you can ask anyone but you get a lot of information in and it can be quite overwhelming because it's like oh my gosh this person said no this this dress looks nice but this this um, outfit is what will suit this market or this person said no maybe you should launch with like a pre-order system and someone says no just get the bulk so you can sell people don't want to wait there's so much information going around I feel like if you have a mentor or like one confident and I, kn I do know that's why people say have a business partner people usually say to have a business partner because that is someone you can lean on just like a mentor so if you don't want a business partner and you want all your coins to yourself <laughs> That's not the only advantage, but I'm just saying, if you don't want a business partner, you can actually look into getting a mentor, which is what I'm also looking to. So if you guys know any cool people that would be good to mentor me and someone I can like speak to freely, then definitely drop their, drop them in the comments below. I'm definitely all ears, but yeah, I think that's so important. I think it's really, really important to just have that confidence and that person you can go to for things and they're happy to help you as well. Start small. Now I'm going to use myself as an example because I launched last September with six dresses. Now that is relatively small but it could have been smaller and I say this because what I found after launching was that it was a bit overwhelming having to market all those six dresses and yes they're for the same sort of woman and the same type of like girl but it's still important to be able to market them small in the sense that maybe you can launch like two pieces or three pieces or even even get it one piece now this is something my brother actually suggested to me before I launched but I was just super trigger happy I I'm a very creative person I have right now I have designs for days like I've sketched them all I've put them all on illustrator like I've done the digital sketches so I have designs for like the next five years I'm not even kidding and yes I know things may not be in trend but I just like designing so I have those things out there but just because you can design and you have all those designs waiting and ready locked and loaded doesn't mean you need to drop them all at the same time I also found that a lot of marketing companies were reaching out to me asking me that you know they would love to like help me with my marketing and stuff like that and obviously their costs were super high well it's fair enough their costs are high because they're also running a business but they also thought I was a very established business which I am not I literally launched last year but because of how my website looks and like the six dresses and everything was just so pristine and so clear and so just put together I've been I've been told that my website looks really professional and looks everything looks fine so Having seen that, you don't. Re it doesn't even look like the brand literally just launched. They were like, "Oh my!" Every time I would explain, like, "Oh, um, the marketing service is a little bit out of my budget," they'd be like, "Oh, okay, you know." Um, I'm just like, "Oh, I just launched my business." They're like, "Oh, it seemed like you had been running, going on for ages, and you've been like a fully well-established business." I was like, "No, I just launched last year." So they would always reach out and I'd always have to like shut them down in the sense that I can't afford your marketing. I cannot be paying you 2000 pounds a month to market to like influence and all this. That's just, 
it's crazy crazy money like even if i did have that money i'm not paying anyone two thousand pounds a month to market for me like i'm not freaking gucci i'm not although gucci's marketing budget is probably like 10 times more than that but i'm just saying i'm not this huge luxury brand you see so i feel like it is so important to start small because when you do start small you can literally put all your energy and all your efforts on that one piece or those two pieces i feel like the maximum i would have preferred to launch with was three but that's just in hindsight and hindsight as they say is 2020 so i'm still happy i'm still proud of my items and you know they're selling they're doing well but this is something i would have done well to think about before build a recognizable brand and when I say build a recognizable brand, I just mean that you you should pick something that kind of tells your story. So that could be your color scheme, could be your packaging, could be the types of captions you put on your branding. Literally branding is just telling a story and people who buy into that story are the people who will be repeat customers and the people who love you. So it can literally be anything. And when I say color scheme, like maybe the theme of your Instagram is like a certain color scheme or the way you write your captions or the little notes that you put in your boxes before they get shipped or like you know it could just be your thing like you could even <sighs> I'm trying to think of all the different things I thought of when I was thinking of branding but it really just has to tell a story like everything has to be uniformed everything has to be like people should see your page and see your clothing it could be yeah exactly it could be in your clothing there could be something you sew inside your garments that run through all your fabrics and all your garments it literally could be anything but i feel like it's so important to have a recognizable brand and something that people know you for and like you for and even if they don't really know you for they just know the the look they might not recognize obviously you're just a new business they're not going to see like a dress and be like oh that's an nwp no but they might just know the color scheme they might know that this is what you do this is how you do it and you've got to tell that story as well you've got to let people know you've got to put it out there on instagram on insta stories and everything and so people can kind of really buy into the brand i'm saying this i'm saying this for myself as well trust me <laughs> but yeah it's really important to have a recognizable brand so that you can make more sales and people can recognize you ultimately last but not least but probably the most important is make sure you have a good manufacturer now i have a quick story time on this i'm not going to bore you guys too much but i have a quick story time so having a good manufacturer is literally the foundation of your business and they can literally make or break you i'm not even they, they they can make or break you because you might have all the best designs you might have all the best fabrics the ideas the drawings the the everything but your manufacturers are the people that you really just have to have on being on good terms with and you know they have to be just solid i actually started manufacturing in the uk which was hella expensive like really really expensive and i was being charged um uk manufacturing prices but when my products were sent to me I saw that they were being made in Romania. Now there's nothing wrong with Romania, that's Europe. But I was sold by the person who I was in contact with, my manufacturer, technically, like literally actually. I was sold by my manufacturer that my products were being made in the UK. So I was being charged UK prices, which is what made me make my prices, you know, a lot higher because you're paying for a premium. We know there's no sweatshops involved. We know there's literally no undercutting. Everybody's being paid well. So you're paying for that premium. And me finding out that they were being made in Europe, I was just like, wow. So you mean to tell me you're charging me UK prices, but you're actually outsourcing to Romania. And honestly, after I found that out, I was just like, yeah, this, this woman has to go as well as they were not getting my sizes right. So I was just really, really frustrated with a lot of things and now i have a new manufacturer which i'm really happy with which i'm really loving but that was a lot of time wasted like i had so many issues with sizing i had so many issues with cost like paying an arm and a leg for me to find out i could be paying less if i literally cut you the middleman out but you didn't tell me that you're technically the middleman you made it seem like this was being made on the united kingdom soil no just no 
But anyway, I've rammed on for too long. I hope you took something from this video. Honestly, I know I probably sped through it and I spoke so much, but they are all points to be made. And I just feel like if I had known some certain things beforehand, then I could potentially have, you know, who knows, just been in a different place, excelled more, done different, done different things differently. <laughs> and yeah, but if you would like any more business tips or what I'm doing, what I'm working on at the moment, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to share that with you guys. But I definitely will be doing like a lookbook of my new pieces launching and maybe even the old pieces because I never shared that on this channel because, you know, I'm still I'm kind of starting my YouTube back up again. So I can do like a try on for the old pieces as well as like try on for the new pieces. And yeah, I'm definitely down to show you like first samples because first samples up. Most, nine times out of ten, first samples for clothing is usually hideous. So it'll be funny to show you guys how they progress in my designs and just basically like the timeline. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and yeah, leave a comment, hit the bell to be notified when I release new videos. But thank you guys and I'll be back soon. Bye!